that time of the week again when many of us are desperate for new things to read or watch. Yes, it's the Drums Book and Other Stuff Club. This week we're discussing a book that will resonate right now. It's about walking. And of course, walking is pretty much the only thing many of us have been able to do outside for the last few weeks. The book is called Perfect Motion, How Walking Makes Us Wiser. And our guest, author Jono Lenine, is close to an expert on the subject, having tracked 2,700 kilometres by himself across the Himalayas after, after the death of his brother. Day after day, month after month, I kept walking. And by the time I reached the Mahakali River, the border between India and Nepal and the end of my trek, something had changed in me. The fog that had shrouded me since Gareth's death had lifted. I wasn't healed. I still yearned for his presence, but I'd become stronger psychologically and emotionally. Honor and trust had crept back into my life. One stride to the next had become simply about pure movement. The wonder of being, the ecstasy of doing, the joy of adventure. And the author joins us now. Welcome to The Drum, Jono. Hi, Julia. Thanks so much for having me. Um, now, you've, you say in your book that everyone knows when you go for a walk, magic happens. Like you're feeling stressed about something, you go outside after, you know, a couple of kilometres, suddenly things seem clearer. Um, and have, you have a great idea. You know, so, and you say, why does this happen? Why does it happen? What is going <laughs> on there? Okay, wow, okay, that's a, that's a big question, Julia, with lots of <laughs> different aspects to it. Now, um, maybe we'll start with just the idea of you go for a walk and you feel less stressed by the end of it. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that when we walk, we come back into touch with time, natural time. When you're in the office, when you're at home, you know, stuff isn't working the way that you want it to, the feeling around time becomes compressed. But when you go out for a walk, things start to stretch out again because actually walking is related to the way that we understand time. When it comes to ideas, there's a lot more going on there because walking is a way to, for us to, to, to lose ourselves in a way. Uh, it brings us into liminal states. By that I mean it brings us into places in between. It brings us into places where you're not, uh, you're not completely in touch with who you are as yourself. And when you lose that feeling of self, then you're able to look at problems and conundrums in a fresh way. You're able to come up with new approaches to new problems. So right, so that's what some people call flow or being in the zone, right? Which is kind of a, an absorption as well. But I'm sure there's not a mathematical answer to this question, but how much do you need to walk to get into that state? Like how much, is, it, is, it, is part of it repetitive motion as well? Well, yeah, th definitely there's that. Uh, uh, Julia, you probably experienced that in swimming. You know, yes. when you first get into the water, um, you know, <laughs> you're cold. Uh, <laughs> when you first start walking, you got to warm up. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is that after about five minutes, your, your brain starts to release a series of, of uh, neurotransmitters that start to create a more open and creative mindset. Then after about 10 minutes, your neuroelectrical levels start to drop down. And again, that opens you up more to the uh, kind of this, this zone between the conscious and the unconscious. And then after about 30 minutes, then the really magical stuff starts to happen. And that's where you start to lose that sense of self. And that's because your prefrontal cortex starts to slow down its activity. And the prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that actually creates the sense of who you are. And when that happens, then you get into that liminal zone where you're able to look at things in a new and fresh way. So that happens only after 10 minutes? Well, it starts to happen after five minutes. Yeah, wow. But the real magic, the real magic yes. happens after about half an hour. Okay. And is it best to not have, you know, to be listening to podcasts or to be distracted or on the phone? Is it best to just be present when you're walking? Uh, you know, I always say you got to get out there. You got to get out there and do it. Okay. Right. right. 
<laughs> it's not going to happen, uh, you know, sitting, sitting, looking at the screen. So you got to get out there and do that. And if you need a podcast to get you out there and do it, then fine. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind that after that 20 to 30 minutes, magic's going to happen. And you'll start to feel that. You'll start to feel your mind drifting. And you'll start to feel that flow of ideas. And when that happens, turn the podcast off. Oh, you really make me want to go walking now, which is something I did just this very morning. And Toby Ralph Good. did on the way here. 40 minutes you had. Did you hit the flow? Uh, absolutely. I'm right in it right at the moment, Julia. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, wherever I live, I, wherever I have a house, I, it's next to the Botanical Gardens or mm -hmm. on a beach. Um, and I, here in Melbourne, I don't have a car but I live next to the Botanical Gardens. I walk most mornings, then down by the river, only for an hour. Um, but it's delicious and calming and wonderful. And what's, um, what about this magic happens thing? Like, do you experience that in terms of your thinking no, or creativity? I, 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 fe I feel calm, I feel relaxed. I feel it sets me up for the day. It really mm. does. Yeah. I, I wouldn't exactly describe it as magic because of the evil things I do. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it, 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 it clarifies for me and sets me up. Yeah, it's great. What about you, Diana? I mean, I um, only just recently got a car. So I was a huge um, cyclist um, for years and um, would always try and walk to work. And to be honest, um, I would have to agree that whenever I just need to kind of get out, it's the fresh air, it's the sunshine as well, um, which we don't get a lot of in Melbourne. So you've got to take advantage um, as much as you can, particularly the vitamin D. Um, I think there's like quite a few factors at play um, to just kind of clear your mind. I'm not a, a listener of podcasts or music at all um, when I go walking or I'm exercising. I really like to be present. So I do find that it clears my mind. It's a huge stress reliever, particularly at the moment where gyms and sporting clubs and all sorts of conventional um you know, exercise um, routines have been sort of um, going through a bit of upheaval. So people are walking everywhere in Melbourne. The parks are packed. Um, the Merry Creek um, is packed in mornings, in the evenings. Um, it actually is probably a bit riskier in, in terms of trying to socially distance when there are so many people out. But it's been lovely to see families and kids on their bikes and it's a beautiful um, coming together of all communities at the moment. Mm. Jono, um, um, Diana was mentioning there, you know, cycling. You were talking, you were likening it to swimming before as well. Um, is it also, can you also get it through yoga or is there something very specific about a kind of, again, about a repetitive tread? Is there something about that? Yeah, so there's a couple of things going on there. Um, now, evolutionarily, human beings have kind of related movement with creativity and that goes back four million years to probably when the, our first ancestors stood up to grab a piece of golden fruit and then walked a couple of steps more to grab another. That was really the start of creativity in a way and that was initiated by walking. Um, and then the, the neuroscientific connection with the flow state and the release of neurotransmitters, again that's re that, that is actually released by movement. So you can get that you can get that in just about any physical activity swimming cycling kayaking yoga what makes walking uh, special in a way is that it has this connection to us as homo sapiens um, you know we are we are a walking species i can i describe homo sapiens as bipedal problem solvers and that is really related to the fact that about 100,000 years ago, uh, Homo sapiens had two major cognitive leaps. One was the advent of symbolic thought, the idea where objects present as much more than just what they physically present as, and also um, the idea or, or the, the attainment of uh, spoken language. Those two, when those two uh, leaps come together, then you have the start of story. Right. And that story, that story is related also to the fact that around about that time, Homo sapiens were forced out of East Africa on this cross-continental journey. And so probably the most, the most universal story structure is the journey narrative. And when you walk, you connect with that narrative. Which, we, which is something we're still doing. Jono, it's such a delight to have you on the show tonight. It's a beautiful book. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jono Lennon, he's the author of Perfect Motion, How Walking Makes Us Wiser.